China's top diplomat Wang Yi is in Moscow meeting Russian leaders just days ahead of the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Wang Yi held a series of meetings in the backdrop of a war that has rapidly shaped a no-limits partnership between Moscow and Beijing. The latter is now reported to be considering supplying lethal support to Russia, a development that the U.S. has cautioned would be a red line. Amidst those possibilities, we are looking at a deeper question today. Why does China keep supporting Russia over Ukraine? Especially given that China appears to acknowledge that Russia has violated Ukraine's territorial integrity. Listen to what former colonel in the Chinese military, Zhou Bo, said to DW's chief international editor, Richard Walker, over the weekend on the sidelines of the Munich Security Conference. Well, China as a country that is uh, not uh, fully reunited certainly is more concerned with this issue of sovereignty. So we understand how sovereignty uh, matters, really, yeah, uh, be it in China or in the rest of the world. Uh, talking about this war, I'm sure um, Mr. Wang Yi is referring to the war in Ukraine. And, and clearly, I believe this is a violation of sovereignty of one country uh, by one country of another. Yeah, this, this, this is clear. But uh, I think uh, China's uh, thoughts on this issue just, just uh, goes a bit further to the root causes. Because uh, uh, if you talk about a murder, the investigation always started from murder. But actually, the murder was planned a long time ago. So because we have some sympathies with Russia in uh, uh, knowing that uh, the fundamental reason for Russia to take this kind of military action is because of NATO expansion. I'll be delving deeper into these sympathies in a moment with an analyst. But first, here's more on why China continues to merely imply support for Russia, but is more explicit when it comes to criticizing the United States. Well, I think there is a difference, indeed, uh, in an attitude toward uh, the United States and toward Russia, because uh, we were uh, taken differently by these two countries as well. We were taken by the primary competitor of the United States, and we were taken as the strategic partners by, the, uh, uh, by, by Russia. So therefore, the attitude of these two countries are different to China. And we have to consider China uh, is uh, also Russia's uh, uh, largest neighbor and vice versa. So in, the, in this regard, we have uh, to have to make sure that our relationship with Russia is a good one, a sustainable one. When you look at the China-Russia relationship, do not always judge it, you know, from uh, the eyes of a third person. You, this relationship has to be put into context of bilateral relationship. But if you look at this from the bilateral relationship, then you would understand, you know, we really need to develop this relationship with Russia because we're not just a neighbor, because uh, both of us have all what we need from each other. But uh, so this kind of a good relationship should be a good and a normal state-to-state -state relationship. Yeah, it should not be, you know, put on the test by other countries on something that China has nothing to do. May, I've been a Chinese, I sometimes feel flattered in that nowadays everything seems to be related to, to China. Even about this war in, in the heart of Europe, which has nothing to do with China. But the people would still say, which side do you want to take? And all your questions seems to be suggesting indirectly that China should have a clear-cut position. And this actually is a kind of asking China to take a side. And then we have this question whether China would be a serious mediator. This is what I learned at this conference. Could China just, uh, you know, persuade uh, Russia, you know, make a user influence uh, about, uh, you know, what the Russia should not do, so on and so forth. And then it even give people some imagination as to how a similar conflict might occur in Taiwan Strait. Yeah, so all these things, what I mentioned is, because this war has nothing to do with China, but still it invites so many people's uh, imagination or discussion about the role of China. Uh, in, in one aspect, this is good. This shows that China is really powerful. China is really important. And China also wants to play this role in a responsible manner. 
And for more context on this, I'm joined by expert on Russia-China relations, Velina Chakarova. Velina, one year on from the start of the Ukraine war, are China and Russia increasingly on the same side? Or is Beijing still, as it claims, impartial? No, both uh, countries are on the same geopolitical page. And in fact, this modus vivendi of coordination has been in the making over the last eight to 10 years. So uh, right now, what we are observing is the manifestation of it and not the other way around. What is driving this partnership? Why does China continue to support Russia? Well, first and foremost, uh, they uh, are not engaged in a strategic alliance or a marriage of convenience or whatever Western concept you would like to introduce uh, to this relationship. It's a, a temporary asymmetrical uh, partnership in which China has uh, obviously the upper hand, especially when it comes to trade, economy, uh, financial uh, matters. Uh, and yet, uh, what unites them is this shared uh, interest, uh, specifically geopolitical interests, in creating a credible counterweight to American global uh, power projection, and uh, also uh, the shared interest in undermining uh, Western interests and Western influence in relevant international and regional organizations, institutions, partnerships, uh, uh, and uh, obviously also relations with third countries uh, around the globe. Second important de uh, common denominator is uh, to uh, stabilize the Eurasian landmass, that means creating connectivity, transport energy corridors uh, that are an alternative to the US-dominated maritime routes in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, third possible denominator could be also uh, to facilitate a new maritime line in the Arctic, uh, given the climate uh, change-related developments. And Russia is obviously the entry ticket to chi for China to the Arctic. Uh, you know, I'd like to look at this uh, wider China-Russia relationship and expand on that. Now, both countries are also participating in military exercises together in South Africa. And China has also, as you pointed out, increased purchases of oil and trade from Russia. Is this relationship headed in terms of uh, a new Russia-China-led world order? Absolutely. The way they understand the current, uh, let's say, transitionary period of the international relations is that the unipolar moment is over. There is this chaotic, uh, volatile, uh, let's say, uh, period in between. And nobody knows, of course, what will come next. Will it be a multipolarity or, as I argue, actually a bifurcation of the global system centered around a comprehensive uh, decoupling between United States and uh, China? And so once again, we see that uh, China needs a partner uh, such as Russia to boost or to bolster, so to say, uh, its uh, global uh, standing. And Russia, of course, needs a reliable partner such as China to break the international uh, isolation and also to bypass Western sanctions. Let's look at how this impacts uh, uh, the war in uh, Ukraine that China has explicitly refused uh, to condemn. And now you have information from the United States that says that China could soon supply Russia with lethal support and that this would be a red line. I'm wondering if you think China is confident it can withstand any sanctions or any other punitive measures from the West if this should happen. Well, first and foremost, once again, we are already in the middle of a comprehensive decoupling, which is, by the way, mutual. That means that it is steered by both United States and China. And in fact, what was anticipated uh, that, uh, you know, as a more China-friendly administration under Biden uh, turned out to be uh, equally, um, let's say, um, uh, controversial in terms of how to tackle China's uh, regional dominance. Uh, uh, the most uh, severe military escalation in the South China Sea happened actually under Biden's administration. So uh, China uh, would consider any uh, kind of, I would say, measures to support Russia because it wants to avoid a three-front scenario uh, mm -hmm. from uh, happening. Uh, what do I mean? Taiwan, 
military tensions with India, and if there is a security and political vacuum in the north of its border, this is uh, certainly a worst case uh, scenario from uh, from Chinese point of view. But it won't happen in, a, in an overt way. I mean, any kind of weapons uh, delivery, if that is going to be the case, it's not going to be, uh, you know, um, an overt uh, case rather mm -hmm. than uh, actually happening behind uh, the curtains. You know, Valina, a little earlier on, you talked about, uh, I quote, a temporary asymmetric partnership between uh, Russia and China. And with that uh, having been said, do you believe there is a point at which support for Russia over Ukraine can become untenable for China? Yes, there is such point. Uh, China ha has uh, communicated its red line, and in that matter, it shares uh, the American view, namely that uh, the use of nuclear uh, weapons in the war against Ukraine is an absolute no-go. A uh, second important point is that, of course, if uh, the, um, this escalation phase uh, that we are already observing right now turns out to be unfavorable to Russia, let's say Russia once again experiences uh, military defeats uh, on uh, the front lines and it results in a kind of, let's say, political reshuffle in the Kremlin, uh, China uh, can actually point to its constructive role, to its mediator role, and in fact sides once again with the international community by turning its back on Russia. We'll, but it uh, is rather, it. rather unrealistic scenario, of course, because as I said, from Chinese point of view, uh, this kind of uh, sy system shifts are already happening. Uh, there right. is this Cold War 2.0 scenario already emerging and uh, China needs Russia to tackle uh, America. We'll leave it there for the time being. Always a pleasure talking to you. Velina Chakarova, thanks so much. Thank you very much. So Sung Han is our bureau chief in Taipei. Welcome. How likely is it that China will face sanctions for supporting Russia? Well, it's unlikely that China will become an alliance with Russia in this war because it's not in China's interest. Earlier this year, China stressed that the relationship between China and Russia is based on no alliance, no confrontation and no targeting of third parties, indicating that the relationship with Russia is kept at a distance. However, we see Beijing still supports Russia and gives it um, diplomatic and economic support, but leaves room for it not to openly sell arms to Russia. The two sides are acting and taking advantage of each other. China wants to resume investment and trade with Europe. So it would be very unwise um, to materially support Russia and face further sanctions. You mentioned that it is providing economic support. What is China doing to help Russia financially exactly? Well, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine a year ago, most Western countries imposed severe sanctions on Russia, including a ban on oil imports and exports of high-tech products. Many Western companies have completely cut off their ties with Russia, and Russia's trade with the US, the UK and EU countries has declined significantly. However, Overall trade between Russia and uh, China reached a record level in 2022, up by 30% year on year. Both Russia's imports from and exports, especially oil and gas, to China grew. China now becomes Moscow's most important trading partner by a large margin. Now, China, of course, seems to be trying to balance its political support for Russia with its economic need to get things going again after the COVID lockdown. How is it managing that? Well, Janelle, as the war drags on, Beijing's losses increase. As the U.S. and Europe increasingly view China as a strategic competitor, Beijing has suffered the effects of multilateral export controls, investment restrictions and other measures that could hinder its long-term growth prospects. The emphasis on no alliance, as I mentioned, indicates that Beijing is uh, slightly adjusting its policy toward Russia. Now many China experts downplay previous official statement that China's friendship with Russia has no limit, saying it was a, a rhetoric statement that should not be taken literally. Eventually, what matters to Beijing is still its own economy. So Sung Han reporting for us in Taipei. Thank you very much.